Welcome back, so now that our makeshift cool room is all sorted out, here's uh, Jeff and Devon just prepping the mould for the first of the wing spars, um, getting it all ready to do the layup. So Devon's just finishing covering the tacky tape around the outside edge and Jeff was just, uh, oh, where did he go? I don't know, <laughs> just disappeared. Oh well, hopefully he'll be back in a minute. And meanwhile, I've been working on the fitment of the doors um, and you know the other problems that I have. So to add to the never ending list of problems with the door, um, the latest thing is these gas struts now with a 400 pound load on them, actually stretching out the door from the hinge there to where they actually mount on the door frame there um, when you actually put it down to sort of closed position. So my solution for that that I still have to do later is put a, a brace in from here basically down to there and put a hard point in there um, in order to sort of secure it so the gas strut can't f uh, straighten out that part of the door. So anyway, never ending door um, problems, but one day um, we'll actually have them all done. And there's Jeff back again and uh, starting to do the layup now on this uh, spar. So it's going to be like sort of three days well, you know, three separate kind of layups in there, and the cool room's actually working really well in that it's, you know, staying cool enough there that um, Jeff doesn't have to rush with a layup and worry about the um, the resin gelling too quickly, so that's um, good. And here it is not too much longer later on. He's got the first layer, or first couple of layers in there, I believe, and uh, getting ready to lay up uh, the top cap, which is just a bunch of sort of uh, three inch wide, or two, two or three inch wide, um, plies that have been we basically buy them like that in the roll I need to kind of show that to you but anyway um, so he lays in the main layers here and then a whole bunch of um, extra layers on the top cap and then the bottom cap and then core and then closes it all out again um, there's a couple of hard points that are going to come so it's, it's quite an involved process and there's the AC unit set on 62 it's holding about 66 in there which is pretty decent you know, meanwhile um, here I am still doing more work on the door so what I was doing today was just um, adjusting the fitment all the way around the door, like sort of just trimming um, the edges there so it fits really nicely and the door latches all engage. Um, this is, you know, preparation for getting everything set up so I can seal the cabin and, um, you know, test um, how it's going to handle the, the pressure. So we want to ultimately pump it up to five and a half psi so everything has to be sealed. And here I'm just running a bit of paper around the edge just to see if anything is hitting and uh, by this point you know pretty much got it done but um, next time maybe I should have just done it like Dukes of Hazard style and just welded the doors up and just had windows that you just climb in and out of it would have been far easier than trying to do these but uh, anyway we will get there and I will win on this project and meanwhile there's the door seals so these are they arrived and there's a special order for the length you see there's a tube in there that runs through the back and I've just got that hooked up to like a regular pump that you use um, for doing blood pressure, for testing your blood pressure. And so you can see you just pump it up. It doesn't take very much. And it, these things expand quite a lot. And they're going to uh, fit nicely in the door. And um, that's all it takes to basically seal it because you get 5 psi against them. So one little area there of about an inch long will probably only have about 3 pounds of pressure or even less than that pushing on it. So. Um, it doesn't take much to seal the door off because it's such a narrow gap. Anyway, so there it is uh, deflated. So that's that and those are ready to install. And by just uh, late lunch time, um, Jeff and Devin got this one under the bag. So that's the first stage down. So um, tomorrow will be the second stage and they'll be putting in the lower caps. So they got the, the main layup done and then the upper cap. So They'll be putting the lower caps and the core in uh, tomorrow, and then the third day I'll just be closing it out. And uh, meanwhile, Devon also got these uh, rib blanks there, um, pretty much done, ready to be glued down on the board and uh, pull the molds off of those. Those are the last two remaining ribs. And this is on the back of the um, bulkhead there. Got all the hardware in there now for the seatbelt mounts. And as you can see back there, there's the inertial reel and then the seat belt mount for the rear seat and then an, another rear seat mount and then another inertial reel and it's all sort of installed there so that basically hooks up there and the the harness will basically hook up to that um, bracket there for the front seats so that's all done and that seals those holes off from the pressure 
And uh, also on, on uh, Monday evening, I ran the engine again because on the last time I ran it on Friday, I realized um, afterwards that I didn't have the prop set to the flattest pitch setting, which is what I wanted to do for that run um, with that new EGT uh, sensor and also with the new fan on the intercooler. So I adjusted the prop again um, on Monday and uh, gave it another run. And this is the result there. And you know, you can look at all the other results, but um, I just wanted to show you the maximum setting there and as you can see you hit about 1900 on the EGT there and actually looked up for these turbos I believe that they can handle um, about 2050 Fahrenheit sustained because the the turbine wheels there is made from Inconel which has a melting point of about 2500 Fahrenheit so um, hitting that 1950 just you know for um, half a, not even just for 10 seconds there is not a big deal and uh, I suspect that the cylinders aren't that hot because you know everything's going compressed out of six cylinders all going into this you know one little turbo inlet there and so that the temperature is rising a lot as it goes into the turbo but it can handle it so it's not a big deal and as you can see they actually hit 20, um, 20 uh, gallons an hour on the fuel flow there and 3800 rpm so the, the 20 gallons an hour I think it was by the time it got there because the prop was in the flat pitch setting, it was pretty much just thrashing. Um, you know, when you're a static run and the air isn't really moving past the aircraft, it's just, you know, sitting there in the shop or whatever, it gets to a point with a flat pitch there that it's just sort of thrashing around in the air. I think once it got to about, um, you know, 3,800 RPM, that was pretty much it. But uh, the rest of it all looked good. The boost um, is pretty much the same as what we've been hitting. The temperature on the intercooler was a bit warmer. Um, anyway, if you look at, um, at putting those numbers um, back into the spreadsheet again here, I'll put the RPM in there, and there's the the um, temperature and ambient um, pressure, and then I put the uh, you know pressure and the temperature in there for the turbo um, in the intercooler, and as you see now, we're hitting uh, almost 390 horsepower on based on this calculation, and um, you know may or may not be right, but we've definitely got some more horsepower than from last time out of there mainly because we're able to hit higher RPM and at 20 gallons an hour then if you just use the math there it says 417 horsepower but I'm not really buying that um, I think it was just sort of thrashing there and the extra fuel wasn't really doing anything over about 18 uh, gallons an hour anyway so that's our update for the first half of this week and uh, we'll have more for you on Saturday so thanks again for watching